Welcome back to Real Fishing 3, the walkthrough. Today we are heading to the shallows. Let's look a little bit more about the shallows. It is a dense, foggy day today. This is the same lake that you start off in the pier, although now you've taken the boat, which you've seen the pier before. You see the boat that's broken. The boat gets fixed up. Uh, you can now cross the lake. So we are out in the lake casting towards the shallows. We have a few different kinds of fish here. Bitterling, bluegill, carp, a uh, couple kinds of largemouth bass, and the pale chub. So we're heading to the, the, the spot now. The fog is going to make this sight fishing quite difficult. We will spend a full day out here, though, in the fog just to see what it looks like. According to the manual, foggy weather is when uh, fish will bite surface lures a little bit more, uh, supposedly. One common theme for a lot of fishing games <laughs> is that the manual sometimes... Is, uh, is wrong, sometimes for localization reasons and sometimes for programming bugs. Uh, the manual will sometimes say something has an impact on something, but it uh, has little to no impact. In some cases, you can see in the code of the games that, oops, they just didn't code that correctly, so the uh, weather doesn't, can, doesn't matter. I'm not sure if that's the case here in this game, but we're going to try it. So I'm looking through, you can see all of the, the kinds of equipment. We do have some fly uh, options here, which is interesting. I'm not sure um, what's going to be biting on flies. We've got the, the trout spinner. Maybe you just bring all of your gear to every fishing spot in this game. That could be be kind of fun if that was the case, I guess. All right, so we're going to start with our standard bait casting. With We've got our deep diving uh, shad plug. We'll switch to the, the rattle trap, the, the vibrating minnow here in a little bit. So we'll start with our shad plug here. This is the one that's uh, common for bluegills. And indeed, that's what we'll see. We've got our deep diving shad plug. The game does tell you that your lures can get fouled up in the weeds and you can lose lures. I have yet to have a lure lost in this game that, that got snagged on, a, on an environmental obstacle like that. Maybe that's something that can happen. I have yet to see it, though, even after recording, playing through this level. Although I have to say I was not spending a lot of time dragging a uh, deep diving lure across those weeds in the bottom. But of course in real life you will end up losing your fair share of, of gear and equipment to snags. That is a real thing. So it would be interesting if they worked that into this game. It might be a little bit more frustrating than it needs to be <laughs> for casual players to have to actually deal with real snags and losing lures. But your lures are a limited resource. Your hooks and baits are limited, uh, as we'll see even in this level, you'll notice. So there is a juvenile bluegill. Let's take a look. Here we've got an example of using using fish fighting screen here to spot a new fish in a new spot. So here I'm just reeling in a, a juvenile bluegill, putting up quite a big fight here for a juvenile bluegill. And right here at the bottom right of the screen, you see a larger fish kind of come across. The levels are persistent, and fish locations are persistent from fight to um, sometimes menu screens, I believe. I'm, I'm not totally sure on that. But the locations are persistent, so I marked that fish. I, I looked at about where it was. And after I pull this fish in, you'll see um, I took aim at where that fish was. I could actually see it because it's pretty close to the boat here. So we're going to drop this uh, juvenile bluegill back in here. That's the only reason I left this one in the final cut right there. And I'm looking for that, that fish I saw. And there it is. I marked it during that fight. And now we're going to cast towards that fish. So I did a short cast right there. And we are on the rattle trap now, by the way. And so this is an example of something that happens in this game where you set the hook and it just immediately pulls the fish in. I've seen that happen in a couple different levels. I've seen it happen close to the boat and far away. I'm not sure if it's a random thing that, that happens when uh, you just once in a while, once every so often, you'll just have a fish just kind of automatically be caught. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do, I don't think, with the, the distance. Because as I said, I've seen it happen farther from the boat and uh, right up next to the boat. I think I've seen it twice happen right up next to the screen, which is what made me think that, oh, just by setting the hook, you must get a little bit of line, and if that's enough to pull them in, then that's uh, the end of the fight. Anyway, I got lucky there with a pretty large Florida largemouth bass. They're supposedly a uh, difficult fish to find and, and to bring in, especially of that size. Here we have a mature bluegill. So we've seen the juvenile bluegills that have that pale color. And this looks more like what uh, I would call a, a bluegill, uh, having grown up in the American Midwest and done a lot of freshwater fishing. This is a fish that looks like a bluegill. This may be the first one I've caught in this game. I've caught the juvenile bluegills back at the pier. 
end here earlier in this level, but this is the first example of uh, a real what looks like a bluegill. So I left that one in. Fish fighting strategy here is the same with our spinning gear as, as it was in the other trout levels and everything else. You know, you're pulling fish in. You're using the combination of your, your analog stick and your reel to uh, kind of turn fish. When they turn horizontally like that and are going left to right across the screen, that's when you can use a combination of pulling back on the rod and cranking the reel to kind of turn their head a little bit. That'll take some strain off the line and allow you to reel some in. So now we're going to switch things up because I've, I've checked off a number of fish and we're now going to the bitterling setup. We're going to be catching some of the smaller stuff in this level. The goal for this level, I didn't mention, is uh, to catch a deep body crucian carp of more than 12 inches, more than one foot. So that's the advancement fish for this level. But we do have a few species that we want to check off. That's not a requirement in this level, but I would like to check them off. It's been kind of a goal of mine uh, with each of these levels to try to catch all the species that I can, depending on the season. So here's a pale chub, and we'll catch a number of pale chubs. We won't see too many here on this uh, walkthrough video. So there's more waiting when you have the, uh, the bitterling set up here. And there's a couple different baits you have. You've got the dyed maggot, and you have a caterpillar larvae, I think. And the... You, you have a limited supply of those baits, so when you catch a fish and you have to rebait, or if you lose your bait, if you get it uh, taken off by a fish, uh, you do have to rebait, and you only have nine of those when you start the day. So you've got nine of each one of those baits. So if you are fishing in the day, you've only got nine. When you're out, you're out for the day until you go back to the aqua lodge and, and reset the level. So there's a small deep-bodied crucian carp. It's not, not the 12-incher that we're looking for. Uh, we're still on the foggy day here, and we're just kind of jumping between uh, between levels. We'll take care of things here. Here is a uh, here's another one. That's another example of an instant catch right there, where we have a fish just boom. You just push uh, push the X button, and the fish is in. We've got a lot of tiny, tiny pale chubs in this level, and some even so small. Uh, I think we'll see some even so small that it does not make a vibration on your controller so this is an example you can barely see that fish and there's a few of them like that that you have to really just watch for when the bait disappears instead of waiting for a vibration you have to watch because they're so small you have to hit that x button and this i thought was our bitterling bitterling are super tiny in this game as they are in real fishing one where you first see the bitterling but uh, indeed this is another tiny tiny pale chub this one it goes by two inches i want to leave that one in there uh, so as we release this one, the time has been going by and the game tells us time to go back to the lodge. So we are out of time for that day. And now we're heading back to the same level, but the next day it's a sunny day. So we're here on a nice sunny morning. Very beautiful out, of course. And there is a tiny fish right there. I believe that that one did make a vibration. And this is our bitterling. You can see it's a little bit different color. It's a little more silvery color than the uh, the pale chubs, which have, a, I think, a little bit more brown or green. Although it's so small, both on this screen and on the CRT that I'm using to record this, that it's, it's actually hard to tell sometimes when you see that coming up. you got to lean forward to see these fish at the definition that we've got. So anyway, here comes our bitterling. This is going to be another one. The game later tells me, once you've unlocked this letter from the uh, the fishing master, that uh, the bitterling are better in fall. So we're in the springtime now. We're right at the end of the spring season. So if you were really hunting for these fish, you'd have to come back to uh, get a little bit better odds to catch them in the fall. This is, by the way, my Crucian Carp rig. I decided to just kind of skip the bitterling and go after the big Crucian Carp. So I did get a bitterling, but we are on the Crucian Carp rod not the bitterling rod. And I'm using the Crucian Carp bait. So um, I've got a new bait on here. We're just fishing by this, uh, by the stick, by the log. And I'm just looking for a decent sized carp. Carp are slow biters. So you saw the carp puts it in his mouth and then the vibration comes a second or two after that. So you gotta be patient on the hook set. We can tell by the sound of the fish thrashing that this is a bigger one. Also by the, the sprite or the, the fish model. It's got a different model than the juvenile Crucian Carp. This is going to be the mature Crucian Carp. And uh, the, indeed, this will be our um, advancement fish, our day-winning fish. So this carp, uh, not too, too hard to bring in uh, for its size. Standard standard procedure for for battling uh, I set the the line to kind of in the middle of its line strength I just try to get the nice balance of uh, fish hearts versus uh, fish shields <laughs> to to bring them in yeah and as, as I said before sometimes the season makes a difference so you might want to uh, 
check out the different seasons for different species of fish, we are going to unlock the next level. And there indeed is our little, uh, that, that's the reminder that you've got a new level unlocked. That's your, your special jingle at the end. So that is it for the shallows, at least for now. We may come back later to uh, catch another fish and unlock another level. Uh, a little spoilers for what I've seen in the manual coming up. If you like this series, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and also hit me up on Twitter where I am active underscore A-T-E. We will see you next time.